right, Craig asks, this is, I'm a newbie with a question. We love newbies with questions. Uh, just <laughs> upgraded to 365 family and successfully added the suite to my wife's laptop. Created a shared folder in OneDrive and all the files inside synced perfectly. However, any new files added later don't automatically appear on the other laptop. What have I missed? Is it automatically syncing? I don't know. Um, depending on your settings, so you have to go to your OneDrive settings and double check and make sure it's syncing all the time. You may have paused the syncing and not realized it. Sometimes your computer will, if it, it doesn't have good connectivity or low power, it'll pause all of those background because it's a background process that's happening. So all of those things need to be checked. So if you right click on your Outlook, either in the tray, there's a cloud tray or cloud icon in your tray um, down by the clock, lower right hand corner, or in your Windows Explorer and check your synchron synchronization. Let's say that again. Synchronization settings. <laughs> so, and so, I don't know something that comes to my mind. Yeah. yeah. So I got to ask you, is there any difference uh, with OneDrive synchronization between the additions of 365? Between family and premium and business and I don't know whatever versions there are? You know of? Uh, I don't think so. I think it's the same um application i, I want to call it like groove groove used to do that so call mm -hmm. like eight i'm like dating myself it, now it's the but, cloud service yeah, yeah so yeah. it's shared in between the the application so they might be upgrading other aspects of uh of your your suite and the products the workloads that you received with it like word and excel and powerpoint and things like that but OneDrive in the sync, that was a change that they made a while back was like unifying and streamlining the sync engine um, so that it was the same experience. So, so when OneDrive gets updated, it's across every SKU where it lives. Okay, so we still have a differentiator, and I, I don't mean to, um, you know, beat a dead horse here, but we still have a differentiator between OneDrive and OneDrive for business. Yes. So what's the difference there? I think it's the same engine. It's even the same engine when you sync your SharePoint libraries. I think it's the same. Okay. But, yeah. Okay. It's, it's I, more I, on the service capacity when you're going between OneDrive and OneDrive for business, what's available to you as a feature set. And what security settings and all those and who owns it. So my company owns my OneDrive for business while I own my settings around the okay. OneDrive personal. Okay. But it has nothing to do with like, you know, I can sync this, but I can't sync that. But. So again, the organization can set different, uh, uh, you know, have different settings for what they'll allow and won't allow. On the like business side. On the business yeah. side, on okay. OneDrive for business. Yeah, so okay. like, for example, like most of the, I uh, mean, I do that, we have this scenario, it's a big complaint for us, uh, so like we're so locked down, our OneDrive is internal only and federated accounts. Like it's, uh, I can do it and send a link, no one can get into it. And so I often have to, where I have to collaborate with people outside my company, will have to pull it down to my personal OneDrive to be able to mm -hmm. share that out. Now that's a security issue. <laughs> right. You know? Well, you know, it's a blessing and a curse too. And, and just for those that are um, not familiar, OneDrive is the account that you can assign to your Microsoft account, like a, Outlook.com or Hotmail.com or MSN.com, you know, there's a lot of confusion around that for just yeah. the the normal person that's trying just trying to get their stuff done. <laughs> and OneDrive for Business is usually owned by a company. They have a tenant. You have to log in with your work credentials or your organizational credentials, and you know, so um, but not to mean but, you can't create a Microsoft account with a Yahoo email or Gmail or something. You can still create it with those. But if you know, if you're looking for the difference between the two it's like like you said christian personal i own it business they own it if you quit your job you lose access to that and you know the personal one is mine you can't take it away so yeah because i've run into that before where one uh, i'll install a brand new installation of windows 11 as an example and OneDrive installs by default now right you can't you can't it, it's part of windows 11 now um, and when it first comes in, it wants a Microsoft account, which is really bad because people will think, oh, well, that's my school account or that's my work account. They'll try and put it in and look at this message up that'll say, well, this is not a Microsoft account. You can't right. log in. 
<laughs> and that's where people get all confused. They're like, well, no, that's that's the right account, you know. Um, well, no, it really isn't. You know, you need to use that Microsoft account, which is, you know, your Outlook.com or your Hotmail.com or whatever, you know. I always bypass that when I create a new computer and just create a local account and then log in work or school. But I don't know that Windows 11 allows that. I haven't played with it myself. Yeah, it does. It does. It but does. It, okay. It it, it it doesn't allow it on uh, Windows 11 Home. It only allows it on uh, Windows 11 Pro. Oh, so if you have okay. Windows 11 Home, you have to log in as a Microsoft account. It won't let you log in as a local account. So, Interesting. Yeah, it's it's really kind of a pain, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I get we'll the why. The... <laughs> I just don't think it's easy, right? <laughs> yeah. I will say one of the, uh, the the point of user frustration is the ability for a user to have a particularly named work school account, so norm at norm dot com, and then I can go create the exact you name got norm account. Norm.com, that's, that's awesome. It would be awesome. I can't afford the <laughs> domain name, but to go <laughs> norm at norm.com as a Microsoft account is allowed as well. So user experience, you come in and you're like, which account? And it's like both norm at norm.com and the users are like, what are we doing here? I don't know. But uh, these types of experiences, very painful for users. Uh, Sherry, at the the outset, you recommended some things to to look at to help debug the situation. And as you were explaining them, I'm wondering, is there, is it with the sync tool, if you had a file that was uh, had an issue synchronizing, would it stop the computer from syncing the other files? No, it just kind of puts them in purgatory. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, it, and then it'll display messages that you had mess you had problems with three or four files or one file or whatever and it'll show you those the most common issue that i see with onedrive sync is that people um they go in and they perform the sync and or they just drag and drop tons of files over at the same time like hundreds of files at the same time because they think they can it works the same way as explorer and then cherry pick through those hundreds or thousands of files you know one or two that didn't sync and they can't figure out where or why yeah so i always tell people bring them over in pieces always you know um don't bring them over in one big Back. on yeah not good isn't there a problem isn't there a <laughs> local cache too doesn't it cache it locally before it sinks yeah because i've heard of people having problems with cash too as i'm wondering yeah